to give thanks and appreciation to the First Nations peoples who have so graciously shared this place with us. Thank you. Second, I'd like to give appreciation and gratitude to the LGBT archives of UVic and its leader, Dr. Aaron Dever, because without, it was through the LGBT archives that I learned of the magnificence and the unique benevolence of this wonderful university, UVic. Third, I'd like to recognize all of our ancestors who have brought us to this point. Oftentimes, I find myself channeling the thousands and even tens of thousands of years of suffering, endurance, forbearance, fortitude of our ancestors going back thousands and thousands of years. And especially those of our female ancestors who I think shouldered a disproportionate amount of the pain and suffering necessary to bring all of us to this point in time. We can scarcely imagine the anguish, the angst that it must have been to bear children under the roughest and toughest of conditions in places throughout the world. We can scarcely contemplate what kind of strong souls it must have taken to carry the human species forward at times when the environment was so harsh that the human population shrunk to just a few dozens of souls. And indeed, probably without our community with our four-legged friends who also shrunk to a very small number of members, this beautiful thing we call human consciousness would not be here today. And I think of more immediate ancestors who arrived here in chains or were already here and put in chains and were um, suffered from stake, torture, inquisition, Fire, every imaginable horror is what our ancestors suffered to bring us to this point. And I think sometimes if I could ask one of those ancestors, what advice, what do you ask of me that here I am because of you? I believe their advice would probably come down to two very simple things. First and foremost, they would say, enjoy your life. Cherish the present, the present. Savor the world that exists for you today. We did not endure unbelievable suffering for scores and centuries of years in order for you not to appreciate the beautiful life that you have here and now today. And so, for the first couple days before I arrived here, I had the honor and the pleasure to travel up this beautiful Vancouver Island, this, if I may say it, luscious Republic of Vancouver Island, <laughs> and savor walking through the ancient woods around the area of Port Renfrew and commune with the trees, with this beautiful planet that our ancestors bestowed upon us. The second thing I believe our ancestors would say to us if they were here today was that don't only enjoy your life, make your life useful. We did not go through all of this suffering thinking maybe if we just created another generation that generation might create another generation, it might create yet another, and finally, there might be a decent world where people can live their entire life in the 
peace, love, security, and happiness that we have today. So make something of your life. Do the best that you can to make your life useful. And so those are the two words of advice that I hear echoing from our ancestors. With regard to the second bit of advice, be useful in our lives. There are approximately 10 Canadians every day who receive an organ transplant. This is the epitome of people doing what our ancestors asked, the brilliant scientists and social scientists who have organized the entire organ transplant network so that people can consent, the organs can be transplanted, um, the people can leave the ha hospital and go on to enjoy their life. 10 every single day. While we are having this convocation, somebody in Canada is getting an organ transplant. However, over 300 Canadians every day need an organ transplant. Only a small fraction of them are placed on the transplant list because there are not enough organs available for more than about 10 a day. So the balance of the 300 per day end up dying of heart disease, lung disease, liver disease, kidney disease. Now my passion has become to close this gap between the 10 a day that get them and the 300 a day that are declined. As the uh, generous speakers already alluded to, we have already made a difference and hundreds of people have been successfully transplanted with organs that were otherwise being thrown away, but we were able to remanufacture them into transplantable shape. One lady stands foremost in my mind. She was a, a college athletics instructor in field and uh, field, field sports. And um, she developed an illness and progressed rapidly. She couldn't get a lung transplant in time. She took our manufactured lungs. One year later, she won the gold medal and shot put at the transplant games. <laughs> I believe through the technologies that Dr. Uh, Dever so kindly described, we will be able to manufacture an unlimited supply of organs, and we will be able to go from the 10 a day to 300 a day. But that 30-fold increase in transplantable organs also means a 30-fold increase in helicopter and aircraft flights that are also necessary to transplant those organs. That 30-fold increase in transplantable organs also means a 30-fold increase in the carbon footprint caused by the aircraft that deliver those transplantable organs. Now, it seems like a really good thing to save people's lives with organ transplants, and I agree it is. But I do not really think it is right to save people's life and then throw away the entire planet upon which they live. I believe we have to figure out a way to do both the good thing and the right thing at the same time. So together with um, some brilliant engineers and um, other allied uh, professionals, we have been able to create completely green helicopters, which as uh, Dr. DeVore mentioned, uh, we've already set a Guinness Book of World Record on flying a completely electric powered helicopter powered with batteries that are charged by renewable energy. The name for this new type of green aircraft is called an eVTOL. E for electric, VTOL for vertical takeoff and landing. And I'm committed to making sure that at the time we have an unlimited supply of organs to transplant, we will also have an adequate supply of eVTOLs to deliver all of those organs in a green and sustainable fashion. Now these are all beautiful things, but I want to be frank with everybody that I would not be able to accomplish these things if half of my brain was tied up um, 
living day in, day out, hourly in, hour out, the oppression of being a transgendered minority in a cisgender majority. And in the same way, we have so many other people that are impressed in our society, whether because of color or class, whether because of gender or ethnicity, whatever is the cause of people being disregarded and disrespected, it ends up causing a kind of psychic harm in all of those individuals. And we end up having to spend a large portion of our mind just kind of running a double consciousness. Like, what is this other person thinking of me um, because I don't fit into the norms and expectations of the majority? So I want to, first and foremost, I want to thank and applaud you, Vic, for hosting the LGBT archives and showing to the entire world that our LGBT Q, I, and A communities are as valued as everybody else. Thank you. In addition to being able to feel a whole person as coming out transgendered, I was also able to learn a few lessons over the years going from satellite communications and Sirius XM to biotechnology and electric aviation. And I've been able to summarize these mantras in four couplets, which I hope to have the pleasure to be, have these couplets appreciated by the graduating class here at UVic. The first one is to breathe curiosity. We have an amazing world. As our president and chancellor said, the main thing we should know is what we don't know. There have been more amazing inventions during the course of your life than the entire course of human history. I'll just give you two super quick examples. First of all, a dear friend of mine, Sarah Parsik, the world's first space archaeologist, using satellites to understand our ancestors and where they lived for thousands of years, has discovered in 10 years more archaeological sites on the planet Earth than the entire history of archaeology in this past 300 years. In 10 years, there are more new places to discover how our ancestors lived than in the previous 300 years. I mean, that's astonishing. Here's another one. In the past 10 years, due to amazing advancements in exoplanet research, we have discovered thousands and thousands of planets right within the nearby neighborhood of our galaxy, whereas when all of us started college, not one single planet outside of our solar system had ever been found. I mean, these things are absolutely astonishing. And you don't even have to go that far. Within each and every one of our bodies, and in fact, within each of the plants we eat, the fungi that bridge us to the plant kingdom, and all of the other mammals that share this world with us are trillions of cells, and even the greatest scientists know, I would say, less than 1% of what actually goes on in each and every cell, in each of our bodies, in each animal body, plant and fungus. We have nothing but curiosity to lead us forward. So first of all, just breathe curiosity. The second couplet is to question authority. And this is often tough, but people will always tell you they know all the answers. People will always tell you it's impossible. But as Aaron mentioned, always redefine impossible as I'm possible. Question authority. Third, do practically. Ideas are kind of easy, and it's a truism, but it's, it is true that they're kind of a dime a dozen. Work to convert your ideas into something practical. People often ask me, Martin, how do you create these ideas into something practical, like medicines and e-VTOLs and whatnot? I say to them, well, it's kind of like the same way you swallow a salami. It's like, whoa, how is, that's impossible. You have to do it slice by slice. 
And if you're watching your nitrite content or whatever, you're going to spread those slices over a couple years. <laughs> Don't do it all at one sitting. But that's OK. You made a four-year or so plan to get through college, right? You made that plan, and you did it slice by slice, day by day, course by course, semester by semester, year by year, and here you are. Every great project can be divided up into slices and tackled bit by bit. Do practically. The fourth, and might I say the most important couplet, is to always act lovingly. My favorite author, Robert Heinlein, defined love as the condition in which the happiness of other people are essential to your own happiness. Feel yourselves as part of the fabric of life. Whatever you do, do with the goal to make other people happier. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Thank you, Dr. Rothblatt, for that beautiful address and, uh, and those thoughts that you've so generously shared with us. And now, Madam Chancellor, the deans of the faculties have assured me that the students to be presented to you this day and those who are absent have fulfilled all of the requirements for their de the degrees which they will receive today. And I will ask the students to